Well folks, the, uh, the Mikanui Valley, it's the river over there to the left, and all the way along the river, uh, the banks are tunnels done by the miners in, from 1865 onwards. And there's the valley, believed to be one of the largest alluvial gold reserves that have been proven in New Zealand. And the Mikanui Bridge, which will uh, be familiar to many. And there, up river. It's provided income for miners since, as I say, 1865. Folks, the uh, Mikanui Bridge just heading towards the township of Ross from the south of the present time. But I want to I want to take you and show you something. Now I've read an article written by Fira Hancock, a newsroom reporter who covers environment biodiversity and science and the article was published on stuff and it's been placed on the forest and bird site so we're at McLeod's Road here which is around Donoghue's and the major gold mining areas now the article says that conservationist and west coast Conservation Board member Neil Silverwood visited the site in March and was met with what he describes as a moonscape. This is the West Coast Conservation Board that is dysfunctional and was hijacked by the Green Movement. So let's go up uh, McLeod's Road. I think what Neil Silverwood forgot to say was that he was probably here to see his mate and forest and bird employee Brian Anderson, who was also on the West Coast Conservation Board. And him and his family are the only residents on the road up the Mikanui Valley, which we're now on. It's McLeod's Road. It's heartbreaking to see public conservation land treated this way, Silverwood says. All right. Funny thing is, I, I was here three or four days ago and had a good wander around. I didn't know the article was being written. And it's because of that that I've decided to come back. Silverwood says that He's extremely surprised the rehabilitation work was ticked off by Doc. Like I'm saying, he's probably just having a cup of tea with uh, Brian Anderson, who works for Forest and Bird, and is also on the West Coast Conservation Board. He lives with his family on McLeod's Road and, you know, it makes me wonder sometimes for a man so opposed to mining, ferocious, ferocious in his opposition, and he was aware that mining was taking place up the valley, has been since 1865, and yet he bought his property, bringing up his family there. He's been a problem for every miner in the valley from that day. This property here belongs to Alan Birchfield. Not for sale at the present time. Nice spot, all well maintained. This area here has been mined and like every area on the west coast, once you've mined it, the first thing that comes up is the gorse, and then it's followed by 
native plants that come through and grow. The gorse is really the incubator. So going back to this particular valley, the Mikanui River has supported gold miners since uh, 1865. in the Totra district and the Totra district extends from the Canary district to the Mikanui River which is you can see straight ahead of you there. It includes the town of Ross and the mining districts of Donoghue's, Donnelly's Creek and Redmond's which is up the valley here. They're also the tributaries of the Totra and the Mikanui rivers and all uh, Arisophus. Ahead of us on the left hand side is Mount Greenland, on the right hand side Mount Rangitoto and the Mikanui is in the centre. It's in the centre of the richest alluvial deposits of gold in New Zealand. What's been mined is only the fringes. In the 30s and the 40s Miners like uh, Mr. Hamilton, who was a local farmer, made a living mining the banks of the Mikanui uh, during the Depression years. Might happen again in the very near future. The river itself has been extensively explored. It's been drilled for gold, and those that drilling began in the 40s, 60s and 80s, and the proven reserves albeit that they are 80 feet deep, are said to be the largest in the country. Now the land in the valley has never been mined, as the landowners, the Ferguson family, would not allow mining to proceed. However, with the passing of Jim Ferguson, the farm is now for sale, and that includes the Mikanui Valley. So I'm picking that this will see a change. Now where we're passing at the moment, Kevin Gibb mine both on this side and on the Donoghue Creek side during the 80s. Now you can't see where he mined, in fact the, uh, the scrub's grown right up, you can't get through it. And as we proceed a bit further, right up to the hills on the left hand side there is where Les Askew and his son mined the areas also in the 80s. You can't see where he mined. Hey, the miners have rebuilt the road. They don't tell you anything about that, do they? In the early 90s, Jeff Havel did a lot of exploration and mining through here for Silver Surf Investments. Now you can't see where he's been impossible to see it. I'd know because I was involved. Now in the early 90s on the south side of uh, Black Creek Alan M came in and did a number of test holes because it was believed to be a hot spot. They found really good gold and about 11 feet deep. They then moved mining equipment in and mined the area from 1991 through to 1995. Now the records show that they recovered 34,700 ounces of gold and I can tell you, you can't see where they mined. I guess you can work out with a calculator what 34,700 ounces of gold's worth at 3,000 an ounce. Incredible. Now we're mining into the left here.
Now Forest and Birds Regional Advocacy Manager for Canterbury West Coast. Sounds like a pretty important sort of a position. Her name's Nikki Snoynink. And she says that the West Coast is lo losing native forest to mining. What a total lot of nonsense. And a typical greedy approach from this extreme green movement. Now the ability of coasters to earn a living and help New Zealand start to recover over the next three to five years is our number one priority. And mining the Mikanui would be a good start. And the restoration of this entire area, it's all been contoured. A few weeds, a bit of gorse coming through. Give it 10 years, you won't be able to get through the bush on it. Right now, we're right over against the hill. Now keep in mind, the bluffs right through here, right through Greenland, are very, very steep. Down the bottom there, with the ducks on it, is the pond they're talking about. And this is the land that's been restored. Now there's a reality. You can put a roller over this, and within a very short period of time, and if you seeded it, you could have it in grass, if that's what you wanted to do. And what a great outcome that would be. The grass is already coming through, as you can see. And this is the basis of that article that we saw. Does it make you wonder? Now what I am seeing is a lot of fresh deer marks here. Hey, so they're not complaining. This one right there. So one gets to work out very quickly that this is a beat up. I don't blame the reporter, because she would have been uh, supplied all the information. It's a forest and bird West Coast Conserva Conservation Board beat up of the mining sector, because they know that that entire valley holds a huge resource of gold. And they'll be sitting there wondering who's going to buy the land. Could be interesting guys yeah, and i think i think the land's for sale an opportunity for a hard working person that wants to go farming break it in graze it but well done to the guys that did the restoration did a great job i was here six or eight months ago when it was uh, being actively mined and it certainly didn't look anything like this. So this is the side of the mining area, the one bitterly complained about by Neil Silverwood of the West Coast Conservation Board. And this is what it was like before it started. Gorse, scrub, rubbish. Bluffs, creeks running wherever they wanted to, and not much good to man nor beast. So, pretty interesting folks, isn't it? But also included in the article was your standard political green attack. Something we've become pretty used to. 
and I'd like to see every bit of spin that they put out fact checked with a video. Let's line them up. Now the article says the 22 hectare site in the Mikanu Valley, 31 kilometres south of Hokitika, was mined for gold by NZG Limited. Really? Well, that's interesting. Oh, and there's more. The company's four listed directors include James Blackwell, Julia Chayen, Stone She, and David Wongtung. Wow. A quick search will show that, show that they're also directors of many other companies, all involved in producing real wealth for New Zealand. And the first three of these directors, the article says, were directors of Oravida Limited. Oh, here I can feel the politics coming. Can we find out? Can we get a scandal here? Friggin' heck, I think let's write about it. Wong Tung is married to National MP Judith Collins. And he's a former director of Oravida Limited. I say he's a lucky man. She's a lovely lady. And let me finish by saying that NZG Limited, and in particular David Wongtung, have invested more into the coast and continues to do so than Silverwood, Anderson and Snoyink will ever do. And ideology won't feed us coasters. We need to keep away from the drones while the NZGs of this world, who are the worker bees, keep things moving because they're the only thing that's going to bring New Zealand out of the problem that we have, which is getting, getting greater by the day. So there we go, there's a, uh, uh, my review of the article. Uh, unlike the reporter, I don't think the reporter would have been on the ground. Hey, but um, I've been here twice in a week, and I'm pretty impressed. Catch you later.